Shalakia. Ishton Brooks also wrote about the creation of multiple identities for military use. During World War II, I worked this technique with a vulnerable Marine Lieutenant I'll call Jones. Under the watchful eye of Marine intelligence, I split his personality into Jones A, Jones B, Jones A, once a normal working Marine, became entirely different. He talked communist doctrine and meant it. He was welcomed enthusiastically by communist sales, was deliberately given a dishonorable discharge by the corps, which was in on the plot. Now see, and that's the spirit. You see how that came out? You see what I'm saying? So the whole Marine Corps was in on it because they allowed him to do this. Man, that's some wicked ass shit. Bear with me for a second. This is Proverbs 6. I'm going to start at verse 12. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. Verse 13. He winketh his eye and he spinketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. So I guarantee you the subject, you think that that subject knew he was being hypnotized like that? And that's Esau, period. You know what I mean? Like, he's very crafty. You know what I mean? You know, I've worked around Edomites where they basically, you know, he'd be smiling in your face, but then talking about you behind your back. That nigga. You know what I mean? Verse 14, forwardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He saw of discord. Verse 15, therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Verse 16, these six things doth the Lord hate. Even seven are abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. And that is basically Esau in a nutshell. He's a very prideful creature. That's why he's basically labeled, or his symbol is that, that eagle, the highest flying bird. You know what I mean? A lion. To, the brothers was bringing out this. It's a it's a wine. I think it's called Screaming Eagle. It's a champagne or a wine. It was like it's five hundred thousand dollars a glass. And you know, brothers was making comments about it. But I'm like, damn, that's just a slap in the face. It's called Screaming Eagle. And then you come to find out, Rothschild's supposed to have, own it or have ownership in it or more than likely they own it. You know, a lion tongue. Who is the biggest? I mean, that's why we call him the devil. He's a deceiver. And hands that shed innocent blood. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, who sheds the most innocent blood? You know how many, this place, America, how many drone strikes they had? You know what I mean? Like, they just blowing up. They trying to find one target. They hit the whole, yeah, it's just funny. Uh, I'm going to get this Psalms real quick because at the end of the day, this is, this is a military man. This is the same man that, like I say, or part of the same government that you people put your trust in. Not just these other Edomites, but, you know, our people, two-third jakes. You're going to have heathens trust this place. Then again, though, heathens know how wicked this bitch is. Well, heathens just, I mean, you know, they merchants. They try to get their little ends. You know what I'm saying? But no, then again, though, you got some heathens that fell in love with this place that became indoctrinated. This shit like the Borg, you know what I mean? You get over here. <laughs> That's why I like... Like, I know some uh, Arabs I got into it with, Ishmael, Ishmael. And, uh, you know, I got into it with his daughter, his daughter's a dyke, you know what I mean? And I'm like, bitch, your father will never take you back over there because they will kill you, you know what I mean? Like, they going to stone your dumb ass, you know what I mean? After they probably done raped your bitch ass, you know what I'm saying? Like, bitch, well, you tell you trying to play like you a man because you done got so indoctrinated with this place. Now, best believe homosexuality happens over there, but it ain't open in the front like, you know, you ain't going and, you know what I mean? It's a dude that looked like Bruce Lee that is actually Ishmaelite, but he favors Bruce Lee so much and he so much want to be like Bruce Lee. I mean, he literally, he walks around, he, he wears, you know, the martial arts garb. He he, he does like, he, I mean, he, 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 he got a, and he, he favors him a lot. They... I mean, like, like the mother was sitting up there, like, you know, because she, she know that they they attempted to fuck him up, all kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like, they don't play that over there in the Middle East. Um, this is the Book of Psalms, one eighteen, verse eight. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Verse nine. It's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in princes. You people are trusted in the same government that came up with this whole. They came up with the technique to brainwash you. <laughs> they came up with the... How do you think drugs get into 
in this country, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, real talk. You got to remember, like, you got a Coast Guard. You got, but yet still, you got a Coast Guard, but yet still motherfuckers get drilled. And, 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 and you know, man is fallible, so, you know what I mean? He's not going to be 100% accurate on everything. But the fuck out of here, you know what I mean? Man is corruptible, too. That's in scripture. Uh, where was I? Salakia. It says, um, says, under hypnosis, this Jones had been carefully coached by suggestion. Jones B was the deeper personality, knew all the thoughts of Jones A, and was a loyal American, was imprinted to say nothing during conscious phases. God damn. He made one personality be able to sit up there and recognize what the other person I was doing. All I had to do was hypnotize the whole man, get in touch with Jones B, the loyal American, and I had a pipeline straight into the communist camp. Easton Brooks went on at length about the creation of mind-controlled assassins in his book, Hypno Hypnotism. I'm going to go check that out. Salakia. In 1944... And that and, and, and that goes into that pride. This devil is fucking prideful of that. Like, yeah, we hypnotize motherfucker. <laughs> in 1945, Eastern Brook with Richard Lockridge also penned a fictional point boiler titled Death in the Mind. In that book, Nazi captured Nazis captured Allied officers and and, hypno, and hypnotically turned them into double agents. Although the general opinion among psychologists at the time of Easton Brooks' experimentation was that a person's will could not be overwritten through the use of hypnosis. Easton Brook thought differently. In fact, Easton Brooks wrote, I believe the hypnotist's power to be unlimited or rather to be limited only by his intelligence and his scruples. In an interview with the Providence Rhode Island Evening Bulletin, Easton Brook talked about the creation of hypnotically controlled spies by Splitting personalities. Easton Brooks said that the capability is not science fiction. This has and is being done. I have done it. As he indicates, Easton Brook was not only the Salaki was not the only one doing it at the time. Morris Allen wrote that in the, his early days of CIA research, he attempted to take an existing ego state, such as an imaginary childhood playmate, and build it into a separate personality, unknown to the first. Allen would then work with this new personality and command it to carry out specific deeds about which the main personality would know nothing. There would be inevitable leakage between the two personalities, particularly in dreams. But if the, hypn the hypnotists were clever enough, he could build in cover stories and safety values, which would prevent the subject from acting inconsistently. That is so deep. In March of 1951, 28-year-old Pelly Hardup, Hardwoop, walked into a bank in Copenhagen and shot two bank employees to death. When he was apprehended, Hardwoop confessed that he had done the murders but said that he had been hypnotized by an accomplice, Bjorn Schwann-Nilsson, to commit the crimes. Hardwoop was found guilty of manslaughter and institutionalized, and his programmer, Nilsson, was also found guilty of manslaughter but given a life term in prison. An account of the creation of mind-controlled assassins was provided by Colonel William Bishop, who in 1983 was the, made the following statement to researcher Gary Shaw. That was how, after the Korean War, I got involved with the CIA. I have been subjected to every known type of drug. The medical doctors connected with the agency found that certain drugs work quite well in conjunction with hypnosis, hypnotic power of suggestion with some subjects. It did with me. I speak with absolute certainty and knowledge and experience that this is not only possible, but did and is taking place today. I never understood why they selected me personally. There were any number of psychological or emotional factors involved in people's selection. Antisocial behavior, patterns, paranoia, or the rudiments of paranoia, and so on. But when they are successful with this program, or... For lack of a better term, indoctrination, they could take John Doe and get this man to kill George and Jane Smith. He will be given all the pertinent information as to their location, daily habits. Then there's a mental block put on this mission in his mind, and he remembers nothing. So, uh...
Uh, I might read this though. Um, I'm gonna um, stop here, and I'm probably gonna because um, it went into some um, left hand sorcery. So um, I'm gonna stop here, and then after camp, probably finish this little video out with one more um, like video to try and get as much of this chapter as possible, Laura willing. So I'm gonna stop there.